is every book I read this year. It's 2023 and I have been saying for the past year I was going or at least since May that I was going to make a video about books and I just never did it um, I wasn't sure if it was what something like I didn't think that I, I wasn't sure if people would actually watch it If I'm being honest in the last year I somehow got into reading kind of crazy because I was someone who refused to read books before it was like a part of my brand that like I didn't like books which is crazy because now I like to think a part of my brand is that I love books bookstores and books. I wanted to go through every book that I read in 2022 as a beginner reader. And I don't mean beginner as in like I just learned how to read, but like beginner as in like I just started reading like actual books. So I'm gonna get into everything. I have all my books here. You can't really see them, but these are all of them obviously. A lot of them are at my dorm. And then we also have the failed books that I never finished. Obviously I'm going to finish all of these books here, but um, those are just like the books I never got around to. If you wanna follow me on Goodreads, um, I will put the link in the description if I can do that. I'm gonna try and go in order of books that I read. We're gonna start with the very first book I read. Okay. Where is it? Um, all right, this one I believe is very, very, po very, very popular. I think it might be a TikTok book, but it is People We Meet on Vacation. This is the very, very first book that started it all for me. This is by Emily Henry. It's a very, very popular author and a very popular book. I got this one because originally I was going to read It Ends With Us. But it was sold out because this was in that whole time when that book was really, really popular. I gave this book, I'm pretty sure, a five out of five. Um, I wish I had a better review for it, but all I wrote down was Slade. But I do remember I was reading this when I was in New York. I finished it super quickly too. And there was parts where I literally was like, <sighs> I'm sure this isn't everyone's what I read this year. I read It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I don't know my opinion on this author. I have read, I think, three books by her. I read It Ends With Us because everyone was talking about it and I needed to know what was going on and honestly, the cover is really, really pretty. Here's my thing with this book. I understand why it's popular. I gave it a three out of five. If I'm being honest, if I could change my rating, I might give it like a two and a half out of five. Some of the dialogue in this book is so cringy that I literally like had to close. It was like when you watch Riverdale and they say something and you're like, oh, how could someone say that seriously? I just, this book is very intense. I will be honest. Um, I still read it. It's still like towards the end got kind of interesting. I was like, whoa, what is going on here? Two and a half out of five. TikTok may have overhyped this book. I will be honest. I don't think it is like revolutionary. That's my opinion on this. Don't know if I'm a Coho fan. Okay, I believe the next book, I read Book Lovers. I gave this book a four out of five, but I do hype this book up to everyone. I really do love Emily Henry. She really does. She just writes good stories. I love the plot of this. I wouldn't say it was as good as people would be on vacation though. I think I just didn't connect enough with the characters that much. So maybe this is a book I need to read again, but it was definitely good, four out of five. One of my Goodreads, the next book I read was The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, another book that is gonna be on every single person's what I read. This book, I think was the first one that one, wasn't a romance novel and two, was just like, this is like a serious book. To me, this felt like an actual like well thought out story. Couldn't stop reading this. I felt like I was watching a movie. Like everything was just described so well and the plot is just so good. And there was kind of a, to me, it was a plot twist considering the title. I, I was like, oh, cause it had not been spoiled for me at all. I was like, oh my God, it, this is just such an incredible, there's a spider. Oh my God, what do I do? Oh God, oh no, oh no. Ah! No, go away! I think there's gonna be a spider in my bed. They're turning this book into a movie, I believe. I do agree with everyone else that this should be a TV series considering it is sectioned off perfectly to be a TV series. Okay, the next book I read was The Cheat Sheet. Don't remember this book that well, I'll be honest, but apparently I gave it a five out of five. Also, apparently it took me a month to finish. I think I had read it and then started a different book, finished it, and then went back to it. But um, I think this book was about like some NFL player and like another friends to lovers thing. I think they were fake dates. 
dating? Were they fake? Oh, they were fake dating. Yeah, okay, this was like a fake relationship thing. I think that's why I liked it. I thought that was like, oh, that's interesting. So apparently the next book I read was The Summer I Turned Pretty. I don't have this book with me. I think it is at my dorm because I let my roommate read it. I gave it a five out of five. My review, all I wrote on Goodreads was, I mean, I thought I was pretty good. <laughs> um, so um, my only thing is, Everyone loves, what is their names? What are the two boys' names? Oh my God, Jeremiah and Conrad. Okay, everyone loves Conrad and personally to me, he kind of was a jerk in the book and in the show. I think in the book, Jeremiah was definitely better. I don't know if that's a hot take though. Cause I, everyone, every single person I talked to was like, but like, he just kind of pissed me off a little bit. I don't know. Next book I read, I gave Colleen Hoover another chance. So I read Reminders of Him. This book took me like a week. It took me like a week to read. To me, it felt like a 10 centuries reading this book. It was basically about this girl named Kenna who goes to jail because she killed her, killed her boyfriend on accident, but you don't know, like you don't really know what's going on. And then this book was definitely better than it ends with us, like just cringe wise. I didn't, I don't remember cringing as much in this book. I also just didn't really like it. It was too dark for me. I I don't know, if, I just, I like the, the light and fluffy, okay? This was a little too much like prison. They're taking my kid and I'm a bad per, you know, so I gave it a three out of five. I'd honestly give it a two out of five now because I, I've read books that I just enjoyed a lot better than this. So the next book I read was another Taylor Jenkins read book. It is Izzy Jones and the Six. I'll be honest, I kind of had trouble getting into this book at first, at first, okay? Because it is done in interview style, which I didn't know, but I love anything about bands. It reminded me of Fleetwood Mac. Like I love, I just love like 60s, 70s. I think it was 60s, 70s, I remember, but they're turning this into a show and I'm so excited because I really did love this book. I gave it like a 4.5 out of 10, out of five. Oh my God, nine out of 10. My review on Goodreads is TBH, I was high key disconnected from the book till page 300. Then I almost cried and decided it was really good. Yeah, so that is true. It took me a really long time until I was really, really connected and then I literally almost cried. I think it was just like in my head that I was disconnected. I wasn't paying attention that much, but this book is actually really, really good. I was talking to the cashier at the bookstore I go to about this book. And she was saying that if you're wanting to get into audiobooks, you should read the audiobook of this because they have a different narrator for each person, which I would have been really cool. And I wish I did that when I read it, but I actually recommend this book. 4.5 out of five for sure. Funny you should ask. I finished this book in one day. I mainly bought it because the cover is so pretty. But if you're a fangirl, you're, or you grew up as a fangirl, then you will love this book because it is about an interviewer who interviews, I think like her, someone that she basically stand. She gets to um, basically interview this actor who that she loved and like, God, man, it was just good. Beach Read by Emily Henry. This book I gave a five out of five. My review is this was cute as frick. I love this book, honestly. I love both of the characters. I love like the whole, this book is so good. I feel like this was another book, kind of like people with me on vacation, where I was like, oh! The next book I read was It's Not Summer Without You, which is the number two. My review was I Hate Conrad, boo. I gave it a three out of five. I don't have the book with me. They took some stuff from this book and put it in the first season of the show. Oh, I don't want to spoil it though. But there, the very beginning of the book, I was like, oh, oh, that's really sad. It really, the plot wasn't anything special compared to the first one in my opinion. The next book I read, Payback's a Witch. I read this to kick off the fall season. I gave it a four stars. My review was very Tri Wizard Champion vibes. I listened to this book while listening to like Harry, the Harry Potter like audio. It's basically just about witches and they kind of basically go through the Tri Wizard tra Championship and I'm a big Harry Potter fan. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. Once it got really action packed, I really got into it. I gave it a four. The next book, this may have been my favorite book that I read this year. It was The Dead Romantics. I read this because a YouTuber I watched, she recommended it for the fall time and I found it and I read it and I loved it. I literally, this is my review. This book was so good. WTF, perfect for fall. Also made me cry multiple times. Guys, this book was so good. The plot was amazing. She could see ghosts and then she, and then the, the, her, the editor that, or I think he's an editor is like haunting her. And she's like, oh my God, he's dead. Cause he got hit by a car. And like, I love both of them so much. And I, I kept like crying reading this book because I kept remembering like he's dead. And that really upset me for some reason. <laughs> this book was so good. If I could like reread a book for the first time, it would be that book. Ending was so good. The next book I read, once again, I must've left it in my dorm, um, was Shatter Me. Um, I know this is like a full series. I started reading it literally because of Haley Pham and she was talking about it. And I was like, all right, I need something different. 
I think the rest of the series will be super good, but I loved it, just took a while to really understand the characters and build the plot. It was good though, just wasn't like on the edge of my seat, you know? So I gave it a 4 out of 5. The ending of the book seemed like it, the second one's gonna get really interesting and starts to really get into like action-packed superhero kind of thing. The next book I read was Finding Perfect by Koho. It was because my roommate was like, oh, look, it's like a tiny novella. We can all pass it around and read it. So I read it and then I was like, I think I'm missing a lot of information here. So I gave it like one out of five because I didn't know what was going on. This is my review. Unfortunately, my roommates and I got this book without knowing it's a part of a series. Still read it and you know what? It was fine, but I hate children. So LMAO. It is about like kids. I don't remember anything about it. Okay, the next book I read was Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I actually really like this book. Apparently it's her first novel and I just, I don't know. But my review was so good. Wow, death worth the hype. Not like a five out of five for me because I wasn't as connected with the character for some reason, but still love this. I don't know why that's a common theme with me. If I don't connect with the character, I just don't connect, but I still really liked the book. It kind of was giving like summer I turned pretty, but like mature, older, you know? I'm gonna kind of, I gave it a four to five, but I'm gonna skip to the next book, which was One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Actually, you know what? Maybe this was my, no, this is my second favorite book I read. This book left me sobbing. I was crying, my roommate was like, Oh my god. So my review was, yo, I'm sobbing. It ended how I wanted to, it too, but ugh, that letter was so tragic. I just, I feel like I did when I watched La La Land, the tragically beautiful relationship that has to end, but it has a perfect end. Yaws, 10 out of 10. This book was so good, like so good. The plot was just so good. The next book I read was Small Town Big Magic. Is she here? Nope, it's at my dorm. I read this also because it was Halloween season. This is my review. I love anything that reminds me of the Harry Potter universe. So I had key really liked this. The main character though was kind of annoying in the way she kept being like, I'm so powerful, but I'm powerful. Like girl, please we get it. But overall, I love the cozy town and the friend group. There's so much potential for this to be a really good series. So a lot of people have given this book really bad reviews and I completely understand why. The main character is insufferable. She keeps talking about how she's the chosen one, but also, you know what? Harry Potter was kind of like that too. And I love anything magical like that. And again, I listened to it with the Harry Potter um, soundtrack in my ear and it made it so great. I think this actually has potential to be such a good series because I love their friend group and I loved the town. Okay, so the next book was actually an audio audiobook and I had never read audiobooks or not read I've never listened to an audiobook before and I decided I was gonna read to all the boys I love before because I'd watched the movie way back and I was just curious and I never read it so at first I hated that I didn't have a physical copy of the book to read but I actually liked having something to listen to um, when I wanted to read but couldn't cooking or driving I don't know anyways actually really enjoyed the book it feels so different than the movies the relationship between certain characters is so different in a good way really good first audiobook yeah like i don't really remember the movie that well but um i thought the book was cute it was fine the last book i read this year one day in december uh my review is i love a good cheesy hallmark movie-esque plot this book was actually good it's the only like christmas book i read this year though which is sad i love hallmark stupid movies i love cheesy hallmark movies so much i like this book a lot and a lot of the reviews were kind of bad and maybe i'm I'm glossing over some parts with the love interest it was bad. I kind of just liked the whole idea of like, well, they make eye contact on a bus and like years later, but I'm also like, girl, you should have told your roommate. You, she should have told. It also takes a really, really long time for them to get together. And when I mean, like, I mean, they should have just gotten together here in the middle, okay? They get together. Like there's like two pages where they're like a thing. Now I'm gonna get into the books that I read and bought this year, but didn't finish and I'm gonna finish. One of Us is Lying, this is what I'm reading right now. It's really good, but I bought it and I had maybe five days left in the year. So obviously she was not gonna get finished. I pre-ordered this book because I needed to know what, was, what this was. I have heard bad reviews. Um, <laughs> once again, I'm a Harry Potter girl, Harry Potter, Goblet of Fire. I never fully sat down to like read this, but it's something I go to read every once in a while and I'm gonna finish it. But Unravel Me, um, this is the second book and I stopped reading it because I realized there is a novella that goes between these and I wanted to read that book before this, so I had to stop reading it. From Bad to Curse, this was the number two to whatever which book that was. Couldn't get into this book. I tried really hard. Howl's Moving Castle, this is one of my favorite movies ever. It's just like, I don't know, a Studio Ghibli movie. Do they make the movies based off the book or is this book based off of that? I'm pretty sure it's, it's book then movie. Emma by Jane Austen. I really want to be a Jane Austen reader. I just can't understand what she's saying. The Love Hypothesis, I didn't even start this book. I bought it. 
I hate the cover. I'm sorry. I just didn't read it. I just know that they're about gonna make it into like a movie or something. So I was like, I need to read it. I just bought this book. I got it back after New Year's because I left it at my friend in my friend's car. But it's the very secret society of irregular witches. I don't know. It's been in my TBR for a while, and I guess it just came out or something. The Hotel Nantucket by Eileen Hilderbra Brand. I actually really liked this book and I only stopped reading it because I didn't want to be in a summer mood anymore. So I'm definitely gonna go back and finish this book, but Atomic Habits, um, the only reason I haven't finished it is because I was like highlighting stuff in it. I'm glad my mom died. I didn't read it. I, I bought it because I was so excited and then I didn't read it, but I'm sure I'll finish this quickly because I am nosy and I love tea. These are them all, okay? This is every book I read this year. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I will see you next week with a new video. Oh god. I have to resituate my bookshelf now. Bye.